Hey guys, what's up? Time itself here, and this is some Battlefield 3 campaign. Now, this is the third from final mission in the campaign, but I'm going to try to avoid any spoilers, so if you're worried about that, this should be okay. But I did kind of want to share this with you. Uh, as you see, we got ambushed, and I really don't care. Um, they don't need me, honestly. That's generally true of most of this. You're just along for the ride for most of it. They'll tell you you have to kill something, you have to do something, it turns out you actually don't. They're just yelling at you because they like yelling, and your actual participation is more or less voluntary. And this is the hardest difficulty of this campaign. You know, it's only hard, there are only three difficulty levels. There's not an expert, a legendary, or veteran uh, to give some uh, similar difficulties in other games. And this is not a terribly hard difficulty setting. As you see here, I'm just like, you guys don't need me. Do, you, do I have to kill someone? Is this, I was thinking, you know, maybe I could play through this level as a pacifist. And, you know, actually, I don't think you could, but, like, am I really, do I have to shoot someone? Is, is this something I have to do? Can you not take care of it here? Because, honestly, I would really like a challenge. I mean, when I buy an FPS game, I buy it intending to play through and beat it on the hardest difficulty setting it offers. Uh, generally something along the lines of why am I putting myself through this level of difficulty because in the end I usually feel like I come out of it being a better player at least in some regard. You know, in some way I have managed to improve and the game has forced me to improve and that's why I play these on hard to start with so that it forces me to understand the game mechanics and what I'm supposed to be doing so that when I finally get to that really hard level difficulty I can actually you know I'm not behind so this is what I decided to do I'm gonna knife only I'm I killed that first guy with my gun but for the rest of the game I'm gonna try to only knife people and see if I can do this so as a wannabe only use me blade or proc Samson take your pick I'm gonna get through this level of the campaign from here on out uh, there are gonna be some parts where I have to destroy vehicles and they make me take out the rocket launcher and I'll, I'll do that at that point but as far as infantry, knife only. And obviously since it's the campaign, there's lots of just running around. And then since I'm trying to knife only, there's lots of crawling around. So I am going to speed up a lot of the parts of it. Uh, just try to keep this video reasonably short. When you're doing something like this, or even just going for a veteran or expert or legendary playthrough, it's important to consider the game, how the designer des had to design it. And by that I mean what they did to decide where the next checkpoint was going to be. And in this game, Battlefield, it's very similar to the Call of Duty series and Homefront. Uh, especially, I mean, they're just the same style of game. But in general, there are three qualifications to get to the next checkpoint. And that is, kill so many people, wait so long, or hold out for such an amount of a time or get to a certain point on the map. And in general, this game uses, it seems to be all three of those. The kill count is actually extremely low. And so, you know, you get three or four guys down and you're considered to have done your share of the work and it'll, that will be all the people you have to kill because your teammates will do the rest. Uh, it's a good thing, bad thing. Your teammates here are competent and will kill people, but that also means that you can do things like this and you don't really have to contribute that much to get through it. Actually, I'm going to interrupt myself here at this point because melee in you know, a battlefield is actually a lot of fun, how you grab the guy and stab him. So, um, you know, we'll get along the wall here and, uh, excuse me, sir, sit down. You know, I'd wanted to say that in a commentary for a while now, and I just got an excuse to do it. <laughs> you, you, oh, no, teammate killed him. You, what about you? Can I just stab you in the ankles? No. My teammates are doing a lot of work here. This guy, you can sit down too. Have a seat. And one more. I feel like I should be yelling at him to intimidate him, and <laughs> he freaks out a little bit. I don't know if I got the kill or not. Anyway, back to talking about checkpoints in these games. So there's the time element, and it's a little bit longer here than maybe it absolutely has to be, but it does take them a while to get everybody onto the map, and the next checkpoint's obviously not going to trigger unless it's a bug until they've got all the enemies they're going to put on the map, and then you have to start get, get killing them. So that's not really a big deal. And then there's the where to go, 
and in general, Battlefield is very, very specific about where you need to be. That little blue diamond that you see floating around, that's where it wants you to be for the next checkpoint usually. Sometimes you can get away with just pushing forward and it'll move along, especially if you have to push through enemies, but in general, to do this, all I have to do is go prone, crawl out there, knife a couple of guys, and crawl back to where the blue diamond is. Uh, this is the part where one of the parts where I have to take out the rocket launcher and destroy the, the armored vehicle or the whatever else. I think there's a jet at the end of the mission. So, no knifing here, but that's uh, just what I have to do to get through the mission. Call of Duty veteran players are going to be watching me running up into enemy, like where the enemy could see me from, and be like, how are these guys not automatically aware of you? Because in the Call of Duty games, when you get close to anyone, especially on veteran difficulty, the slightest footfall will alert them to your presence and they will turn and blast your face off and you'll be done. So <laughs> you actually can't get in very close on veteran in the Call of Duty games. And it was fairly similar in Homefront, although not quite to the same extent. I guess in general, those fights just happen at longer ranges like most of the fights in that game. And so getting in close to where they had to you know try to see where you were wasn't quite as much of an issue but here you still it happens occasionally but not as often where the enemies are just they know where you are and so they're putting bullets over your head because of the cover system where it blurs your vision when you get shot at uh, that would make the game extremely hard to play if they did it like that in the campaign so they have to not be putting pot shots above your head all the time otherwise you really wouldn't be able to get much done so here we just crawl around them, get on the flank, and sit down. I know some people probably aren't going to think the references to Call of Duty or Homefront are appropriate, but I think they are extremely appropriate. This game plays very, very similarly. I was expecting something, you know, a little bit different with how they emphasize teamwork and multiplayer, but uh, it doesn't really happen. And I know with all the vehicles in multiplayer, I was hoping for something, you know, I would get to fly a jet or a helicopter in the campaign, you know, actually practice a little bit for the single, from the single player, be ready for multiplayer, and no, there's none of that either, so <laughs> just get to run around and knife people because uh, I wanted a challenge, and you know, this, this was an adequate challenge for this level. There's probably most of them you can't do this on the sniper level, you're not going to run out of your cover. And <laughs> across the map and up the stairs and knife all the guys on the roof and you probably can't even get on the roof of that building but uh so this is probably one of the few levels where you could actually get away with doing this you see i just knifed a couple people and was like you yeah, know my work's done here run back get to the checkpoint and he's like oh uh, let me shoot a couple bullets and we're good to go and what about everybody who was back over there who was still alive last time we looked yeah don't worry about it i feel like i need some epic music at this point Now I know you're thinking time, this is looking really beautiful with the Frostbite 2 engine and really epic with this music, but you're not doing anything. And to you I say, well that pretty well sums up Battlefield 3 campaign. Sit down.
Okay, this is re fucking ridiculous. Are you sure this is hard? Like, are, are you serious? You, I, this is... I, I don't... Yes, this is hard. Okay, well, let's keep going. So, yeah, I did have to take the rocket launcher back out to get rid of the armored vehicles. I don't think I could knife my way through one of them. So, it's just the way that has to be. But I don't get to knife any more people here. That's it. Um, I shoot a couple more rockets, shoot a stinger, and that's the end of the mission. Uh, I accidentally did not record a part of this here, but I don't have to knife anybody. You just crawl up the right side of the road, and it gets to the next checkpoint. I didn't have any issues with it at all. It can't run into the open field. Uh, they kind of shoot you if you try to do that, but just right side of the road, up to the next checkpoint. No big deal. Then, uh, then you do a little sequence with the jet, grab the stinger, shoot it down. Mission over. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you later.